In the early 19th century, the Catholic Church realized it had a problem. Perhaps it must be admitted more than one. But the problem that preoccupied it at that moment had to do with the divine office. These were eight times in the daily life of a Catholic community when chants were sung. Plain chant, Gregorian chant, simple songs sung by humble monks. Not to put too fine a point on it, the Catholic Church had lost the divine office. The different services throughout a religious day were still performed. What were called Gregorian chants were sung here and there in the odd monastery, but even Rome admitted that the chants had strayed so far from the originals that they were considered corrupt, even barbaric, at least in comparison to the elegant and graceful chants of centuries earlier. But one man had a solution. In 1833, a young monk, Dom Prosper, revived the Abbey of Saint-Pierre in Solem, France, and made it his mission to also bring back to life the original Gregorian chants. But this produced another problem. It turned out, after much investigation by the abbot, that no one knew what the original chants sounded like. There was no written record of the earliest chants. They were so old, more than a millennium, that they predated written music. They were learned by heart, passed down orally, after years of study from one monk to another. The chants were simple, but there was power in that very simplicity. The first chants were soothing, contemplative, magnetic. They had such a profound effect on those who sang and heard them that the ancient chants became known as the beautiful mystery. The monks believed they were singing the word of God in the calm, reassuring, hypnotic voice of God. What Don Prosper did know was that sometime in the ninth century, a thousand years before the abbot lived, a brother monk had also contemplated the mystery of the chants. According to church law, this anonymous monk was visited by an inspired idea. He would make a written record of the chants, so that they'd be preserved. Too many of his numbskull novices made too many mistakes when trying to learn the plain chants. If the words and music really were divine, as he believed with all his heart, then they needed to be safer than stored in such faulty human heads. Dom Prosper, in his own stone cell in his own abbey, could see that monk sitting in a room exactly like his. As the abbot imagined it, the monk pulled a piece of lambskin, vellum, toward him, then dipped his sharpened quill in ink. He wrote the words, the text, in Latin, of course, the Psalms. And once that was done, he went back to the beginning, to the first word. His quill hovered over it. Now what? How to write music? How could he possibly communicate something that sublime? He tried writing out instructions, but that was far too cumbersome. Words alone could never describe how this music transcended the normal human state and lifted man to the divine. The monk was stumped. For days and weeks he went about his monastic life, joining the others in prayer and work and prayer, chanting the offices, teaching the young and easily distracted novices. And then one day he noticed that they focused on his right hand as he guided their voices, up, down, faster, slower, quietly, quietly. They'd memorized the words, but depended upon his hand signals for the music itself. That night, after Vespers, this nameless monk sat by precious candlelight, staring at the psalms written so carefully on the vellum. Then he dipped his quill in ink and drew the very first musical note. <laughs>